everybody and welcome back. This is part 18 of our Trumpeter 1200 scale HMS hood build. Uh, as you can see we've finally got the uh, model uh, secured and protected inside uh, the temporary uh, dust cover. So this is just a temporary uh, cover that I've made to protect the model uh, while I'm building it. It's not going to be the final uh, case. This is just made out of some uh, pine and some polycarbonate sheet uh, and it's designed just to protect the model from dust and overspray. Uh, the spray booth is uh, fairly close to the modeling bench uh, and even though I've got extraction for the sp spray booth I don't want to get any paint overspray on the model and it's easy to get uh, dust accumulating on it as well so this will do the job of protecting it I've used some bubble wrap previously but that kept on snagging and as I add more detail to the model uh, it's going to get more and more fragile so I wanted to get something a bit more substantial uh, in place. This will also protect the model when I'm working around it, it will avoid me catching uh, my sweater or anything on some of the parts and as you know if you've been watching the other videos I've avoided fitting some of the parts such as the MFDF room with the aerial spreaders uh, and the funnels with the delicate uh, funnel caps. I've not fitted those because of uh, a fear of catching them and breaking them off and damaging them. Uh, but I can go ahead with a bit more confidence now that I've got this. It's a fairly heavy cover and that's because it has to be so long. It's nearly 1.4 meters in length and that's to accommodate the uh, length of the ship obviously uh, and I've had to fit handles at uh, all four sides of it just so I can lift it off safely. All I need to do is lift off one end and slide it away from the model and down off the table so hopefully uh, that will give us a bit of protection and give me a bit more confidence in moving on with the build. Uh, in terms of what we're going to be doing in this uh, video, I want to carry on and do some of the detail work around the pom-pom bandstand and the after defence position which we started, uh, which we did a little bit of in the last couple of uh, episodes. Uh, but before I can fit the pom-pom bandstand down, I need to prepare some of the detail parts, the events and uh, hatches and skylights which are all around the pom-pom bandstand and they need to be fitted at the same time. So we'll just come in for a bit of a closer look at where I'm going to be working today uh, and the parts that I'm going to be working on and then we'll get over to the bench and get them prepared. So continuing uh, building the area around the after control position and the pom-pom bandstand and as I said uh, in part 17, before I actually fit this bandstand in place, I need to have done uh, some vents uh, which fit under and around the bandstand itself. There are also some ammunition boxes, some ready use lockers for the uh, four inch mountings, these two port and starboard and the aft one here. And they need to be made up as well. Uh, there is an issue with the 4 inch ready use lockers which we'll come on to a bit later in, the, in this video. Uh, but otherwise I want to get on and do these vents uh, which are engine room vents and some hatches which need to be made up as well. So, so I'm basically uh, working along the centre line of the model and I'll be moving out as gradually as I uh, get further into the build uh, and that's just so that I'm not reaching in and reaching across other construction uh, that's already been put in place. You'll notice that this back screen has popped off. I'm having a lot of difficulty with these. Uh, I'm gonna have to find some other adhesive for them. The super glue's not working at all and I've obviously I've put some super glue in already and Super glue tends not to stick to itself, so you're just adding uh, problem after problem just by applying some more super glue. So I'm going to have to resolve that problem. Uh, part of what's happening, I think, is that the temperature uh, the temperature out in the barn uh, fluctuates quite a lot, and the brass will expand and contract at a different rate to the plastic. 
so I think that's what's popping it off um, so I'm gonna have to come back to that and get that fixed uh, a bit later on I'll have a think about what sort of adhesive to use uh, for that probably some contact adhesive or some uh, adhesive that's got a bit of ex uh, expansion in it so we'll get over to the bench now and get these vents uh, built and the hatches and we'll have a look at this uh, issue we've got with the 4 inch ready use uh, lockers. These are the uh, Pontos instructions for all the vents that we're going to be doing in this part. And these are the trumpeter parts removed from the sprue so we've got B13, N1, P2, couple of E35s and this B29 and obviously all this etched brass has to be cut off the fret yet. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is modify the trumpeter parts and it's really a case of removing all the areas uh, marked in red on the Pontos instructions here. So we'll start with uh, B13, we'll do them all in the order that they are in the instructions. So with B13 all we need is the uh, roof, so I'll clean it up first and then just cut the roof off. And uh, unfortunately I haven't managed to fix my small uh, rotary tool yet so I'm still with the Dremel which I don't really like. won't take all of that off just yet it might be that the Pontos uh, part actually fits around the old uh, bulkhead there so that exposed ridge might just give us some glue surface we'll see it might not once I get the part folded up it might be that we've got to remove the whole thing so but it's just worth a try it might just give us a better might just give us a better glue point we'll take a look at that so we want part 369 so that's this uh, Pontos part that just needs folding up it's just a simple box obviously it gives us the new uh, vents in there Uh, I don't think so. I think that's gonna. Oh, it, it might just go together. I think that might just fit in, especially if we just trim a tiny little bit off the edges there. So I'll solder that part. I've got quite used to soldering now and uh, it definitely does a stronger job than glue okay so the first thing to do is just to put uh, a little bit of liquid flux onto the joint and I'll just sit some solder in there it's a bit too much there I'm only tacking this 
down at the bottom I don't want to get any solder in the mesh further up the grill or further up the vent That's all it needs. Oh, that's good. So the leaving that little bit of the uh, plastic sidewalls on has just given us that location point and just a tiny uh, speck of glue will secure that in place. I want to keep this glue away from the grills. That's the first one. That's the uh, modified B13. That's the first one done. Move on to uh, N2 now, which is a bit more involved, I guess. So this whole back section comes away uh, from the part and we'll just end up with the forward end. got a door on this part as well that will take off you just need to be careful on this back wall because we want to get it nice and vertical the join so I'll just finish filing that once I've got the replacement etch brass vent constructed and I can just make sure that it uh, goes together properly it's somewhere near it's going to need a little bit more off but uh, we'll see when we've put the etch brass vent together which is 368 so that's this part So this uh, vent sits at the back. So with that structure all nice and uh, strong, we can just gradually modify this back wall of this structure. It's actually the uh, auxiliary battery room here. And obviously these are engine room vents. So I just want to trim the back of the trumpeter plastic until we've got a nice vertical join between the two. And just obviously do it nice and slowly. 
as the old saying goes you can always take a bit more off but you can't easily add it back on there we go that's a nice uh, nice tight join there I'll uh, go ahead and cement that in place I think and then there are another couple of uh, details the doors have got to go on the top and there's a flange that runs around the side uh, but I'll put that on once I've got this set up to the uh, battery room I'll just reinforce that a little bit that'll uh, strengthen the joint between the two so this flange slides into some slots on the side here, well all the way around the part and once it's located again just a drop of the super thin into the joint I'll do the doors and wriggles and the mushroom vents which go on the top I'll do those first because these uh, doors are quite fragile few people have been asking about these uh, pencils they're basically just wax pencils the, if you go online if you google photo etch placer uh, it should come up with uh, the coming packs of two and they're basically just a wax pencil it just gives something for the photo etch to stick to pretty useful really it's just a, a very hard wax it's just tacky enough to lift the part uh, but not too strong that uh, it won't come off when you get it onto the model so they're pretty useful really There we are, just, just enough to lift it up, but the super glue will dr drag it off the pencil. Just find those uh, mushroom vents and fit those now. To be careful with these they're just the sort of they're just the sort of part that tends to spring off the bench the larger ones that are fitted to the forward funnel base sorry the aft funnel base I managed to lose two of those well I didn't lose them I eventually found them uh, on the floor uh, 
and with a part as small as that I'm not going to try and clean it in my fingers I'll get it attached and then I'll just sand the sprue attachment point once it's on the model see that's uh, determined to get on the floor is that one Sometimes you mess about with all sorts of tools and the best tool in the box are these. Oh dear, I don't know whether you can hear all that, the cat's in trouble again. He's out for his walk. And uh, he's obviously made some mischief. No doubt a local furry creature's met his end. The important thing with these mushroom vent is to make sure that this sits perfectly straightened horizontal they look awful if they get uh, not to one side and they don't sit nice and straight these are the doors and they have On the back, I don't know whether you can see, they have um, like a stay at the back that just needs bending through uh, 90 degrees. I did have some trouble with this it, on the after engine room vent, just in front of the control position the after control position uh, and in the end I just glued them in flat so if these don't go according to plan I'll be doing the same thing I think the easier thing to do is to just apply a bit of glue to the to the vent part and then add the door the slight problem with these doors is once you decide to have them open you really want them all to be the same uh, angle and that's uh, easier said than done and that's what happened with the last vents I did I broke the little arm off and if I can't get that fixed back into place I'll end up closing these doors I think I'm going to spend ages trying to get those done. So um, I'll just fit the doors closed. There comes a time when you've just got to concede defeat with some of these things. And there's no point uh, 
battling away with them and just getting frustrated when uh, they can go on closed and it really doesn't make that much difference okay moving on to the next one which is p2 and this is a bit of an oddity really because Pontos want us to just use the bottom half of the plastic and replace the uh, vents and the top with the doors on and I don't understand why they just didn't provide the entire piece as they did with this one rather than have to trim that bit of plastic so it would have been easier just to have an entirely brass part there but they've done it like this which is a bit strange that's the etch part glued down onto the trumpet of plastic I think it's just unnecessary really we could have had a full piece like uh, this rear one that went together in no time whereas this one needs a lot of cleaning up it's a uh, third vent right these two now and we need the roofs again from these Okay, so those are the three uh, vent roofs. Roofs. Uh, so these are 371. One of the sides of these vents has got a flat face, i.e., it's not beveled, so it's butting up to one of the structures. So hopefully, this will fit like the other ones around the remnants of the plastic that's the part soldered hopefully the roof will go inside well, it's going to need a little bit of trimming That's it. And we'll just touch some extra thin on the back. I can uh, clean that up when it's dry. So these are the smallest of the vents that we're making. Okay. So hopefully, if these fit like all the others these uh, roof parts will just drop inside there we are so they just need a little bit of adjusting to make sure that uh, the plastics gonna fit so again just a drop of glue around the plastic I've only got fingers to do one side really but actually that should be enough Uh, that's uh, better this uh, particular vent also has uh, this part on it which is uh, the support bracket for the main uh, derrick boom uh, which is on the main mast and obviously the derrick uh, sits in this sort of position um, resting on the this bracket on the roof so that's uh, it just needs folding up and applying to the roof of the vent uh, 
I'll uh, I just want to check this how it goes so there's a long edge here so this is running fore and aft uh, and the bracket obviously needs to be orientated like that This is the uh, part of the Pontos instructions which details the area that we're working on at the minute. So this is the position of the pom-pom bandstand. This is the after defence position location. And we have three vents here, here and here. So I'm going to start off with the various size hatches and we'll be starting with these which is 443 and 444. I need uh, eight of those. These uh, parts appear on the funnel frets, so if like me you've got an extra fret 5 to do the funnel modification, you're going to have some spares of this particular hatch. So this is the first hatch that we want to do. Just two parts, uh, a box and a lid. So I want to fold those up first. and I'm just going to glue these. I have tried to solder uh, a couple of them and I get a neater result gluing them. They're not a structural part at all so uh, I think they look okay glued. I'm, uh, I'm not skilled enough yet to solder these parts. Uh, get a better result gluing them. So that's just a, a simple box and I'll just add a little bit of extra thin glue just run into the joint just to seal it a little bit. In fact I'll do that when uh, I'll just do it along with fitting the lid. So that's the uh, box bent to shape. The lid we just bend the hinges down at the back and I take them a little beyond 90 degrees because of the shape of the box. It's got an angled top and I'll just glue that down. Just use some uh, medium super glue on that. And I'll use the hinges to locate the part in the correct position. And once the lid is uh, fixed, I can then go back in and just bend the dogs up. And just try and do it in one motion, don't be uh, bending them backwards and forwards because they'll just snap off eventually. They might need a little bit of straightening out just to get them to sit properly. There we are, that'll do. So that's the hatch. They look nice painted. Um, it tends to bring out the, the detail of the fixing brackets and so on. Just for a bit of variety I'll do a couple of these hatches with uh, the doors or the lids open and I'll fold the dogs before I glue the part this time because uh, the assembly will be a bit too fragile to be doing that afterwards. So uh, let's see if we can manage this one.
I'm going to have to be careful with these obviously because they're a lot more uh, fragile than the closed hatches. I think that'll be all right. It's quite strong. That's one of the uh, hatches with the open lids. So a bit of variety. So I'll just mark off the ones that I've built. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next ones I'll do are these, which is one, one, two, six, one, one, two, seven. Okay, so these are the parts for the next type of hatch. I'll do five of these to start with, just for the part of the shelter deck that we're dealing with at the minute. There are more than that required further forward, but uh, I'll just do these for the time being. And these are the same as the previous ones that we did. They've got the ray, uh, they've got the etched detail in for the hinges and clasps and stuff. So we'll build them in the same way. So they're a proper square box, they're not um, angled like the other ones that we've just done. So we want a 90 degree bend on the hinge rather than over bending it as we did with the previous ones. Again, use the hinge detail to line the lid up. Okay, and again, just bend each of the dogs up. So that's the next type of hatch. That's uh, the next batch done. I've crossed that one off by mistake. That's a different one, and there's only one of those required at this stage anyway and that's 11.28 through to 11.30 just one of those so it's this one that we're doing skylight hatch type E which has the frame over the top it just has a little pulley on it so presumably it was to hoist uh, material down into the ship through the hatch that's quite a shallow little base and the frame locates on the central uh, line of the two doors. There are two hatch doors on this one and the frame just sits either side or the legs just sit either side of the hinges. I think that's about right. So you can see the uh, hatch with the frame rigged over the top. The uh, next type of hatch is uh, type C, which is this one. And basically there are two sets joined together. So it's like an arched roof uh, effect. So we'll have to build, we need three of these in total, so we'll have to build six of these uh, boxes and then join them together in uh, three pairs. A lot of these uh, hatches, of course, were moulded into the trumpeter decks, so I sanded them off. Uh, so there isn't a comparison to be made now anymore, uh, but as with all these things the Pontos parts are an awful lot more detailed than the Trumpeter ones. That's not to say the Trumpeter ones are bad, the detailing was okay on them, but uh, these are better although obviously the effort in making them is a lot more. With the Trumpeter mouldings all you had to do was uh, paint them basically. 
It's the same with a lot of uh, ship modelling that a lot of the operations that you do as a modeler are uh, repetitive because there are lots of them. Um, so it's a peculiar thing probably to ship modeling and I suppose you just have to get into uh, a zone with it. I find the first one or two of these uh, assemblies I maybe struggle with it a little bit and then before you know it the uh, you whiz in through them like a bit of a production line. I'll be glad when I can uh, get these plasters off my fingers. One or two of you have uh, made comment about the fact that I've always got a plaster or a band-aid as some people call it. And uh, it's not that I'm continually injuring myself. It's down to a carpentry injury. It must be a good two or three months ago now where I hit my thumb with a hammer and lost the fingernail and I just don't think it's very pleasant for you people to be looking at really so uh, I just cover it up so in case you thought I was just particularly clumsy with the knife uh, I'm not I was clumsy with a hammer on one occasion and uh, it hurt, believe me. So there, six boxes made up in fairly short order. And I'll put the uh, lids on. I'll put plenty of glue on the ridge there just so that it uh, seals the two together. Okay, so I'll do all the tops first, uh, and while that's uh, drying, I'll make the other ones up. So by the time I've done them, I can come back to this one and uh, just bend those uh, dogs up. I'd have liked these uh, lids in one piece, just with a fold across the ridge. just uh, a bit fiddlier having to match them up like this. Well, after a lot of pushing and shoving, it's uh, it's worked. And then these uh, pieces go on the end. They'll actually reinforce the connection between the two sides of the box. Go back to our drawing and we can mark off another three. So the last one we have is this one here in the middle. That's this one and I remember making one of these actually. We did it on the uh, side battery deck. I'm going to build this one a bit different so I recall doing it last time. Um, and I think I probably did it wrong. It needs to be fitted with the open part of the base up to the hatch lid. And that gives us a uh, good contact point when it actually comes to sticking that down to the deck. I'll do this uh, 4.30 now, which just sits on the back of the uh, after control position. These uh, are Tamiya photo etch scissors and they're just useful for just snipping off the little nubs like that. Actually that's worked pretty well. I'll get some uh, glue on that while I've got the chance. I think I've got a few of these to make. They go around the funnel bases as well but uh, that's for another time. I'll work forward once I've got all these hatches fitted around the back of the shelter deck. 
I'll uh, move forward to the funnel bases and get uh, some more of these fitted. Uh, I mentioned earlier on in the video about a problem that we have with the uh, four inch ready use lockers. They're on fret 11 of the Pontos uh, set. We get two fret 11s and each has 16 of these four inch ready use lockers. So they're here in pairs. Eight pairs, 16, two frets, so that's 32 lockers. Uh, unfortunately, uh, each gun on the hood carried five of these lockers uh, around the working space of each mounting. Uh, Trumpeter provide 35 of these plastic lockers. Uh, but as I say, Pontos only provide 32. So we're three short of the complement. The puzzling thing really is that if we look at the Pontos instructions, uh, it calls out for 33 of these ready use lockers to be fitted to the model. And the shortfall comes on the aft uh, starboard uh, mounting where there are only two shown. So I don't know what's happened with Pontos there, we, we're short in the set. I've made one of the Pontos lockers up and they look like this. So they're very nicely detailed, they've got the locking latches on. Uh, whereas the trumpeter ones don't. The trumpeter ones aren't bad, the door detail's pretty good. Uh, but obviously we're going to need uh, 35 sets of lockers. So what I'm planning to do is to make up the 32 that we get in the Pontos set. You'll also notice that Pontos provide for each uh, of the lockers a set of open doors. And I suppose that's just in case you wanted to display them all open. Uh, we can use the trumpeter carcasses with a tiny bit of modification. They're more or less the same size but not exactly. They're a bit uh, shallower so I'll just add uh, a little piece of uh, styrene to the back of the uh, trumpeter part. So what we're going to have to do is make up three spares from the trumpeter parts and use the spare doors that we get in the Pontos set to line the front so that from the front they'll look the same. Uh, but I think once the doors are fitted and I'll have to scratch build some little latches uh, for these three uh, extra ones so that they match the Pontos part that we've got here. So that's all going to be a bit of extra work. I'm not going to be able to get that done uh, in this video. I'll make those boxes up over the next uh, couple of days uh, and get them fitted and we'll come back to it uh, in the next part of the series. Apart from that, the rest of the parts are ready for the uh, after shelter deck, so we'll go over to the model and get those fitted now. Okay, so we can get some of these uh, hatches and vents fitted. And I'll start with the vents. These have been uh, painted now. And I'll fit the three large vents first, these that we uh, made up. So for this uh, large vent and the uh, battery room we've got some plastic to plastic contact so I can use the uh, Tamiya cement for that. And I've just put glue on the inside so that it sticks to the raised side of the uh, relief moulding. Um, I don't want to take any risk of getting glue onto the wooden deck. So that will be enough uh, to bond the part. Okay, that's the first one in. This forward vent here with the boom crutch on it uh, is all metal obviously, it's a brass piece. So I'm going to have to use some super glue to get that to fix down. 
So I'm going to apply some on the inside face again. And I'll just carefully put a drop on the plastic deck. And it gently does it. Uh, that should be enough. I'll just uh, leave that to set up. This last one uh, goes at the back here. And that's plastic again. So I can go back to the Tamiya cement. And you can see why I wanted to get these done now before the uh, bandstand was fitted because obviously it would be tricky to get that in with the bandstand glued in. Now we've got two uh, of the smallest vents here. And I just want to make sure that I've got these uh, correct. The uh, position of these parts is marked out on the Pontos deck, on the wooden deck. Um, but you do have to be careful because some of the squares that are marked out are very similar sizes. Uh, so these vents, for example, are a similar size to some of the uh, hatches that we've just made. So we need to make sure that we get the right location for them all. So I'm certain that we've got one of our hatches here. We have another one located here. The other thing to be careful of is make sure that you orientate them properly. So the hinges on these face forward. Then we have the one with the little hoist rig above it. And uh, that one goes with the frame facing fore and aft. Okay, so I'm happy now that uh, there's a square here and one here which are for the two small vents. So you can see how close together those uh, parts are and how easy it would be to get them uh, mixed up. So with all those hatches around this area in place I can go ahead now and fit the pom-pom bandstand. So uh, we've got plastic to plastic again. And the after defence position can go in place permanently now. I'll leave the hacks unglued because I want to take that off and uh, just paint a white band around the back of that. So there we are. That's achieved what I set out to achieve uh, this week really. It's a pity I haven't been able to get to the uh, ready use lockers. So that uh, it's starting to look quite busy now. These vents are a big improvement on the trumpeter parts. 
uh, they are see-through so you can see right the way through the meshes um, to the other side so they're, they're, a, they're a big improvement so if you read um, the accounts of the Battle of the Denmark Strait you'll know that this area uh, caught fire early on in the battle uh, with a hit from one of the German ships uh, and it set fire to the ready-use lockers uh, so these ammunition lockers that I've been talking about the four inch ready-use uh, caught fire and obviously there was exploding ammunition and such uh, at the back of the deck um, but there was also an account of a rush of flame after the fire and just before the main explosion that destroyed the ship it's now thought that that jet of flame came from uh, the explosion down in the magazines venting through these engine room vents uh, so these three here obviously when the magazines exploded the increase in pressure had to uh, escape somewhere and it's thought that the pressure vented forward into the next uh, open space which was the engine room forward here and up through the uh, vents up onto the deck and produced a column of uh, flame that shot uh, upwards into the air and that was just before the main uh, explosion so obviously the pressure was building down uh, in the magazines that was venting up through the uh, top of the ship and then subsequently the pressure couldn't be held and uh, the magazines detonated and that's what obviously caused the uh, final loss of the ship which uh, broke in two more or less at this point so building a model like this for me at any rate makes uh, makes it interesting to look at the history books and uh, relate them to uh, what uh, must have occurred on on the ship okay so uh, that's a bit of progress this week i think the uh, building of the case over the previous weekend took up uh, a bit of time with the build and I haven't got done as much as uh, I'd hoped to so that's it for part 18 uh, coming up next Friday in part 19 I'll sort out these 4 inch ready use lockers and I'll make up the shortfall as I've described using the three of the trumpeter lockers uh, with uh, some of the spare Pontos etch brass uh, I'll finish off uh, with the cable reels and mushroom vents and I'll do some of the detailing a bit further forward as well so I'll get all that done uh, over the next week uh, and I'll see you next Friday for part 19 uh, have a good week everybody uh, and I'll see you then bye for now <laughs>